so everything is on there. Um, what's up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. So today we actually have a little bit of a project. After doing a ton of research on the internet, I have finally purchased what I believe to be a direct bolt-on big brake kit for the Honda Accord. Now this isn't something that you can go and buy online. This is a kit that I've pieced together myself. So I have a set of Hyundai Genesis front Brembo calipers and a set of 300 millimeter rotors. Um, and I'll put a link down in the description so you guys can see what vehicles that uh, both of those are to. Uh, but the 300 millimeter rotors are actually the same thickness as the original Brembo pads that would go for the Genesis. Um, and they are just slightly smaller in size uh, but they are going to fit the Honda Accord hub, which is the best part. So technically, these should bolt on based off of my research. So today what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and test fit the brake kit just to make sure that it does fit. Now if it does fit, the next part of the process is I'm gonna actually disassemble both of the calipers. Um, I'm gonna give them a thorough cleaning. I'm going to paint them in the color that I want them to be because right now they're two different colors. One of them was technically refurbished. The other one was not. Um, so the two reds are a little bit different colors, so that's why I'm gonna have to paint them. Um, and from there, once everything is painted, then we're gonna put the final assembly on the vehicle. So in order to test fit them, all we're gonna do is we're gonna pull off one of the wheels, we are gonna bolt one of the calipers in place of the stock caliper, so we're not gonna fully disassemble it or take off the brake line. We're just gonna move it to the side, test fit this guy if it fits, and the rotor fits, we're good to go. Then we can go ahead and, and start the process of painting and uh, getting these calipers taken care of. I may end up going with a powder coat or I could just order a custom color off the internet, spray them as long as they're heat resistant and we'll go from there. So lots of cool stuff that's gonna come up. For right now though, let me go ahead and show you what I've purchased. It's sitting on the bench. We have two 300 millimeter rotors, same thickness as the original Hyundai Genesis rotors, so they will fit and the hub bore diameter is the same size as the Honda Accord. Um, hopefully one of these two set screws fits in place of um, the current set screw that we have on the car. Um, and then these ones are drilled and slotted so they look a little bit cooler. These are the massive Brembo calipers. As you can see, my hand here for reference. Uh, these guys are the front calipers. This one was the one that was allegedly refurbished. It does come with new pads and all the hardware that you need. And it is painted a slightly brighter color than the stock Brembo color. Now this is the one that I bought from um, another vendor online. As you can see here, it is dirty. It doesn't actually even have the spring clip that retains these brake pads in place. Um, but you do have the pins, you do have the original pads, and everything does seem to be uh, there and operational. You have the two little bleed screws here as well. It's just dirty, it needs to be cleaned. So I'm gonna go through the process of cleaning that later on today with some brake cleaner. Now once uh, both of these are clean and everything is good to go, um, if they do fit the vehicle, if everything is good to go, I'm gonna go ahead and get these painted just like I explained to you before. Um, color to be determined, something hopefully that looks really good on the vehicle. Um, maybe you guys can help me decide out in the comments what you think it should be. If I just redo them red, then they would uh, go really good with the back calipers. But if I buy some sort of spray paint to um, coat the front calipers, I can do the rears as well. I also bought a set of R1 Concept Performance Brake Pads. Um, these ones are basically um, like original equipment pads. They're what you would get if you had the Hyundai Genesis. Um, there's a couple different options that you can get. I decided to get the OE pads just because if that was uh, equivalent to what went in the vehicle originally, that should be good enough for me. So they're, they're pretty large compared to what you're seeing over here on the Sport. Now keep in mind on the Honda Accord Sport that these rotors are larger. The rotors and caliper, um, or at least the rotor anyways, are larger than what you're gonna get on the average vehicle. So on your regular Honda Accord, Accord, I believe they're 11.3 or 11.8. Don't quote me on that just yet because I looked up the information about two weeks ago. On the Sport, they're 12 inches plus. So they're a little bit bigger. There's more surface area on the rotor. These guys right here, I mean, we're, we're in the 13 inch uh, at that point. So it is a significant difference. Now, when we actually go to bolt these on, if everything bolts on the way that it should, once we pull off the caliper and the rotor from there, I'm gonna do a side-by-side -side comparison so you guys can see the side difference. But we are in the making of actually getting a big brake kit that is uh, very inexpensive for it. So for all of these parts right here, which again, after doing all the research, should just bolt on, 
I spent just over $400, and I mean like a hair just over $400. Uh, I'll put the exact price descript, uh, the exact price amount in the description, um, and I'll also insert it later on at the end of the video because I don't have that information offhand. It's actually on my phone, um, but I think that's a pretty good deal for a big brake kit. So you have these massive slotted drilled rotors, and then again you have a four-piston Brembo caliper. So two pistons right here, two pistons on the back side. You have the original um, hardware bleeding it as you can see here. This is from a Hyundai and again when you are sourcing your calipers you need to make sure that you get the Brembo calipers, four piston front calipers from any year Hyundai Genesis. As long as it's a Hyundai Genesis they should bolt up directly to our vehicle after a lot of trial and error. So I know this is a lot of talking that I'm wasting here. You guys want to get to the goods. So let's go ahead and go through the process of jacking the vehicle up, taking the wheels off, and then we're going to start the process of disassembling the stock brakes. All right guys, so what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna hit this rotor. Let me zoom out a little bit. We're gonna hit the rotor and the bolts behind holding the caliper on, we're gonna hit that with some PB Blaster. Basically it's just penetrating fluid, uh, mainly because we wanna get this nice and saturated as you can see here. It is looking pretty crusty, much like the rest of this rotor. And then we have the bolts in the back, which you can barely see now, but you can see the silhouette there's this guy right here, and then right below it, there's a bolt right here where my finger's touching. So we wanna make sure that we spray those on both the driver's side and also on the passenger side. And we're gonna let that sit actually overnight. The sun's uh, going down right now, so we're gonna continue this on to the next day. Um, but we're gonna allow the penetrating fluid to do what it does so that when we go to remove these bolts, even though this is a brand new car, um, we, when you get rust like this, it actually makes it um, a very difficult job. And the last thing that I wanna do is to strip out this right here because then I'm gonna have to drill through it and it's just gonna be a pain in the ass. So let's do it the correct way. Let's, let's uh, give it a little bit of time and see if we can get the penetrating fluid to do its job. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this sprayed on both sides and then we're gonna come back tomorrow and we are going to start the rest of the job. Okay, so both of those are saturated. Um, I'm just gonna clean up the mess in the floor. We're gonna get to the other side as well, and uh, we will see you guys tomorrow. All right guys, so it is day two of this project, and today we are actually gonna go through the process of taking off the caliper and the rotor from the car. So last night, or yesterday before we packed it up, we sprayed down uh, all of the bolts and or the locking screw that holds on the rotor with um, some of the penetrating spray in order to make sure that any of that rust would allow us to break those bolts and or uh, screws free. I also sprayed it again this morning um, and it's been sitting for a couple of hours. So now we're gonna go through the process of disassembling everything and we're gonna see if these calipers and the rotor actually fit the vehicle the way that I intend them to. So let's get through that process right now. Let's dive in and let's take it apart.
All right, so now that we use the impact screwdriver to take off that seized screw, now we're gonna go ahead and take off the actual caliper. Um, in order to do that, you're going to need a 17 millimeter socket and some sort of breaker bar. So I'm gonna use the breaker bar to um, obviously break the bolts on this, and then from there, I'm probably going to just back the screws out by hand. And then we're gonna take the caliper we're gonna hang it up right here on the strut and then we're gonna pull off uh, the complete assembly and we're gonna try to put the new ones in place. So let's get to it. All right, so what I did was I put some zip ties on the end of the caliper here, and then I'm going to take one on each side and just string it up right here to the strut assembly. So we're gonna do this first one. There you go. It is now hanging there. So whenever we need to take it off, we'll just take a set of these, snip everything off. Uh, brake line and everything is still connected because of course when I go to bolt on the new caliper, if for whatever reason it doesn't fit or something happens where I can't install the new system, uh, everything is still connected. I haven't done anything, uh, we'll say major, that would affect me putting everything back together today. So now that we took out that set screw, this, should be able to come off. There's quite a bit of rust there. Um, so that should be the only thing holding it on. So I'm gonna work on this for a second. So these are the stock rotors. So now that we have the hub centric ring off and the rotor off, we're gonna see if the other pieces fit on there. Um, what I'm gonna do also is I'm gonna knock back some of this uh, rust and corrosion. Um, I applied again a lot of this PB blaster to the area so it actually did help out somewhat, um, but it would be in my best interest to take down some of this with some sort of wire brush. So let's go get the new parts and transfer them over. All right guys, so these are the new rotors. It looks like they actually sent me the wrong size because if we go to measure these, the stock ones are at about 12, a little bit past 12. And the ones that they sent me are about 11 and 3 fourths inches. So the ones that they were supposed to send me were 13 inch rotors. So that puts a little bit of a wrench in the install for today. So I'm gonna put the stock ones back on there and we're gonna see if the caliper fits with the stock ones back on there. If they fit together, first of all, let's check if the caliper fits. Um, but if the stock rotor and the caliper fit together, then we'll be good temporarily. Obviously the bigger we want a bigger rotor for more stopping power um, but I'm gonna get in contact with the company that sold me this rotor setup and see if we can get them to send out the new ones or the correct ones. Alright guys so in order for, in order to put the caliper on which would bolt right here um, I need to take a little bit off of the dust shield um, now, obviously taking this off and putting it on the workbench would be ideal, but I don't want to take uh, the hub off just to remove this. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it while it's 
still attached to the car. I'm going to just take these ends off real quick and then we're going to see if we can get it to bolt on. So we're almost there. We just meet, need to make a little bit of modification. So I'm going to use this cutoff wheel, see if I can get a little bit of it off and go from there. So I've never used this particular uh, blade before. So hopefully we can do this without injuring ourselves or the camera, but let's go ahead and get it taken care of. to use a bit to try to clean this up then we're going to put the rotor back on and then we're going to put the caliper on so that we can see what it looks like together i had to go back and get the respirator safety first right all right, so now that this is cut off, everything is nice and smooth. Um, we're gonna hit that with a little bit of black paint just to get the exposed metal. Put those back on. Okay, so now there's no metal on metal grinding. Let's see if we can put this on.
All right, so plan of attack is to take out the new rotors, uh, put them on the vehicle. First thing that we got to do is obviously uh, unbolt the caliper because I have been driving the car, as you can see, since the last time I went to install. Um, it's probably been about a week and a half since um, I recorded the first part of this video. So now we're going to take the caliper back off. We're going to uh, zip tie it back up to the shock. Uh, we are going to take the rotor off and then we are going to try to put on the new rotor and the new caliper and see if they fit together. So let's jump into that and hopefully it all fits. So now that we have the rotor off, let's go ahead and open up this box here. And we are gonna see what they sent us. So these rotors should actually be about a quarter inch larger than the stock rotors. Um, probably not even that much. I gotta go back and look at the specifications. I think they're, they're just bigger than the stock rotors, um, but the overall thickness and height of the rotor, so that's from the back of the rotor all the way to the very top of the top hat, um, they are a smaller profile. So we are going to take it out, put a side-by-side -side comparison against the stock one, of course do some measurements here, and see where we lie. So let's go take these, put them next to the stock rotor. Side by side comparison of the stock versus the new one. If we look at the dimensions of it, uh, this one is about 12 and just short of a quarter. And this one is just short of 12 and a quarter. So they're almost identical size wise. As far as the height goes, If you can see that there because of the glare but these ones are at one and three fourths and these ones are at one and I'm gonna call that seven eighths so these ones are definitely higher I mean you can kind of tell the height difference there so um, still cutting it close as far as the thickness of the rotor um, but really what matters is where this and this actually sit in comparison to that caliper. So we're gonna to try to put this one on there with the caliper, see if that helps us out. Um, fingers crossed. Let's go ahead and put the camera back on the tripod and see if we can get this installed. So these look like they are actually going to fit. However, I do need to trim off more of the brake shield because the bottom half of it is actually still making contact with the Brembo. So I can't actually bolt it on, spin the rotor just to make sure. It's very, very close, but even just right now putting on the Brembo rotor, whereas with the stock caliper, sorry, the stock rotor, it made contact immediately. I couldn't even get it into position. 
Um, with this setup, I can get it in position. I just can't bolt anything on because the shield is now blocking the bottom part of the caliper by about an eighth of an inch from sliding into position to put the screw in. So, we're gonna modify the dust shield and then we're gonna see if we can get them to fully bolt on. So, moment of truth, let's get to cutting. All right guys, so I very crudely cut away sections of the brake shield just so that the caliper could clear these tabs. As you can see right here, I've got pieces that I take, I have taken off of the shield. Um, now it's in pretty decent shape for the most part. I mean, it's just got some rough edges, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and take uh, this little grinder to it, smooth everything out, mount everything, and then see if that does the job. So let's get to grinding this down. guys so I finished trimming the dust shield I do have some paint here so I can go ahead and spray those sections so I had to actually knock down a significant part of this shield in order to give access to these mounting points where the uh, caliper would fit so now we're gonna go ahead and put the rotor on and we are going to see if the caliper fits. Um, I also sprayed the hub with some penetrating blaster and I'm going to go ahead and knock down some of this rust uh, here in a second for final mounting because if you know anything about brakes, um, when you're mounting up a new rotor, your mounting surface, you want that to be as um, a, close to original or stock as possible because it can mess up your tolerances um, or your run out. So, we're gonna bolt everything up, we're gonna test fit it just to make sure it works, and then we're gonna get down to scraping this and see where we're at. So let's go ahead and get this mounted. Okay, now we're going to mount the caliper. Okay, so everything is on there. Um, spin this to see if it's free. So can you hear that? So it's free right here. Once we get to right around here,
So this section right here, you can feel like it's uh, that it's rubbing and it looks like it's actually rubbing on the pad. So kind of like what I just explained to you, um, if I knock down some of this rust, then I feel like we'll be in a good uh, spot to actually get this mounted. But I mean, as you can see, the bolts are holding the caliper on, so this is solid. For the most part, the rotor's on there. Now, of course, um, when you're mounting this up, it's hard to take into account all of this unless you actually have these all torqued down to spec with the wheel and tire on there. Um, but this is basically what you're looking at at this point. So it does actually work. There's a very, very light rub um, and, and it's on the back side because I can see clearance right here in the front of the pad. But there is some rubbing on the back side of the pad. So um, like I said, I'm gonna knock down the rust here, see if that has anything to do with um, the unevenness to it. Um, and I may even temporarily uh, run some shims on the back side of this just to push the rotor out just a little bit so that's not rubbing on the pad. And I wouldn't do that forever, just probably within the, a short break-in period just so that I can get the, the run out in the back of the rotor and in the pads to sit correctly and then you know go through the process of taking it off, putting it back on. But so far it mounts, so we're good to go. And as you can see, it does actually turn. So this is one of the first um, Brembo brake conversions that I've seen for the Accord. I've seen a couple other ones, but none of them that actually use this particular setup. Some of them are using like the uh, Acura uh, TL Type S Brembo caliper. So uh, this one utilizes, you don't need any brackets or anything. Uh, this one does utilize the stock mounting positions and we are still able to retain with this rotor the inner hub diameter, which is important to some people. Some of the other brake conversions, um, they'll use a little bit bigger uh, hub diameter, so you don't have the rotor sitting on the hub. I mean, at the end of the day, when you put the wheel on and you torque everything down, the clamping force is actually within this section here, and it sandwiches everything, so this is not moving anywhere. Um, that's why whenever I put, if I put shims on the back and leave them there, um, I'm not going to really worry about it too much because the clamping force of all of this together is going to keep it solid. Um, so the next part of the process is, of course, to do the other side. So what I'll probably do is I'll probably disassemble the other side, get everything cut to shape, make sure everything fits on the other side. I'm going to take you guys through a uh, time lapse of that. I'm not going to give you a slow play-by-play -play like I did with this side. And then that'll pretty much be it. I'll end the video because what I'm going to do is I'm going to disassemble all of this. Um, I'm going to put all the stock brakes back on for now, and I'm actually going to get these painted because the two calipers that I have, uh, this one was supposedly refurbished, so it's got new pads. Somebody did a pretty decent job at painting it. Uh, I've already gotten it dirty, as you can see here, but it's a different color than the other caliper. The other caliper is like a darker red, and I want to, of course, make sure that I do um, a good job the first time so that I don't have to keep pulling them back off, painting them different colors, things of that nature. And I'm pretty sure I'm just going to keep them red. So, for the time being, everything looks like it worked out. So, I'm very happy with the way everything sits at this point. Um, I'm going to take the rotor off here in a second. I'm going to show you guys exactly what it looks like on the back side. Um, so, we both can see what the rubbing of the pad looks like. Uh, but so far, like I said, we, we've done it. So, All right, guys. So, that's the end of the video. So, I just wanted to take a moment to talk to you guys. Um, it has been a little while since I have last released a video and I know a lot of you guys are actually waiting for this video specifically So I do apologize for waiting so long uh, For those of you guys that don't know some of you guys know on Instagram. I did have a child and um, It's a lot of work <laughs> having a You know little baby is a lot of work. So bear with me um, While I'm taking care of her. I am also still accruing parts that are in the garage. So I'll continue to um, crank out some videos. I am also selling my house and building another one um, So I'm in the process of of course, you know liquidating some things and storing things in uh, storage, so um, I will have things in the work for you or in the works for you. Just be patient um, But you will see more videos coming out one thing that I did specifically want to talk about was the rotors um, 
Now, in the video, you noticed that the rotors in a very small section of the rotor, it was catching the pads. And that was actually due to a manufacturing issue. So I talked to the manufacturer, um, I took the rotors to a local brake shop here, and we looked at the runout. So they put the rotor on a machine and it has a dial on it. And as you move the rotor around, you can actually see that dial move up and down. And in those particular sections, they were machined or there was a high spot in the rotor. So there's a number of things you can do. I highly recommend that if you buy the rotors, and those were just so everybody is clear, those are Hyundai Genesis Brembo calipers. The rotors were Acura TL Type S rotors, okay? Those fit the wheel hub specifically. They are uh, 5x1 14.3 for um, the, the lug pattern. And uh, most specifically, what I was interested in was the thickness of the rotor. So how thick is the rotor plus the top hat? That total size was, was what allowed those rotors to fit with the Brembo caliper. The stock setup, um, the way that the caliper sat on the bracket, when you put the stock rotor on there, it was actually hitting the caliper. So you weren't able to line them up. Um, but with this thinner and slightly offset rotor, which is the Acura TL Type S, um, and it has to be the Brembo uh, uh, rotors, Acura TL Type S Brembo rotors, those did fit within the setup. So you need, again, Genesis calipers and Brembo TL Type S rotors. Those two go together. But make sure that you get a quality set of rotors because the ones that I put on there initially they did not fit, uh, or I should say they fit, but there was a high spot. And there's a couple things you can do about that. When you drive, it's going to eventually wear that down. However, if you drive like that, it's gonna heat up the rotor, it's gonna heat up the brakes, and it could cause warping, you don't want that. You can take it to a brake machine shop and they can actually use a lathe, and they can take off a very small amount of the rotor, um, and that's, Obviously, they call it run out. How much, how much run out do you have from stock location? And then as it eats away the metal, it starts to move closer and closer and closer until you can no longer run those rotors. You have to replace them. Um, you can have a little bit shaved off if you want to go with the absolute dirt cheapest of rotors. And those are, I think they were like 80 bucks for a set of two. Um, or you can get high quality ones. You can get some from the actual dealership that are going to be top of the line, but you're gonna pay a little bit more for those rotors. So any setup that you guys wanna do, you can definitely do it. These are a direct bolt-on. There's no modification required. Um, the only thing that I didn't show you in this video, because there's still gonna be more going on as we go down the road, is um, powder coating the rotors. Um, you've gotta put them on the vehicle, you've gotta bleed the brake system. So all that's gonna come down the road. Uh, during this winter time, again, selling my house, is, as we're building a new one, as we get set up in the new location, and we start to do the garage over there. Um, I'm gonna get into that whole um, setup of doing the brakes for you. But now you guys are aware that it is possible. Uh, for those of you guys that wanna go searching, um, I got these particular, um, I got these rotors and the, actually I got the rotors from eBay, the first set. Second set I got them from Amazon. And then the third set, um, that vendor sent me a new pair of rotors. For the calipers, I also got this from eBay. Um, one of them that I got was about $121. The other one was about $170. Um, but I've actually found a couple places online where you can get refurbished, loaded with pads for $180 uh, per caliper. So you can get two of them, they're reasonably priced. Then you can go online, get your rotors, and you can have a big break kit for uh, a decent price. I mean, nowadays, if you look online, the big break kits, they're running, you know, $2,000, $3,000. You can build yourself your own kit for 500 bucks, which is a steal. So um, if you guys have any more questions, put them down in the comment. Of course, you can always follow me on Instagram. Um, it's JDM Dreamin'. Uh, in the meantime, this is Fahrenheit Motorsports. Hopefully, you guys are watching this for Christmas. I wanted to give you guys a little bit of Christmas content. Um, but in the meantime, you guys have a safe and happy holidays. Once again, this is Fahrenheit Motorsports. You guys take it easy. Yeah.
motorsport. 